the Slovakia elections over the weekend. Uh, there will have been uh, some pleasure at the results in the Kremlin. Well, mm. What's the impact? Yeah, the Kremlin has already congratulated uh, Robert Fico uh, on the fact that he's going to be the next Prime Minister. It'll be a, a, a coalition, probably a fairly unstable coalition, but putting together left and right with his own party, the Smear Party, he can actually probably get 79 seats out of 150. I mean, he's been, he's been Prime Minister twice before. He was removed in 2018 after massive street protests, after the death of a journalist and the journalist's fiance, who had exposed corruption, apparently, in his party. And, I mean, he's been under parliamentary privilege since then, otherwise he'd have been in court facing many, many charges of gangsterism and all the rest of it. But he's going to be Prime Minister. <laughs> so, uh, and he ran on, a, on a, a platform, or part of his platform, was no more weapons to Ukraine, no sanctions. And, of course, the Kremlin are very happy to hear that. So is next door's uh, uh, Hungary, uh, um, uh, the, the Hungarian Viktor Orban. Uh, leader of Hungary, is also very happy. And if you look at the sort of the geopolitical side of it, you can see that there's, you know, three countries in Europe, mm. uh, Slovakia, Hungary and Poland, all on the borders of Ukraine, all very important. They've all had rows over this recently. So you've got this, this uh, election result in Slovakia and we'll see how it goes. Hungary has never, Viktor Orban has never gone in for the uh, sanctions that the West has, has proposed and is really quite pro-Putin. And the Polish government, they're coming up to an election on the 15th of this month and uh, aid to Ukraine is an election issue. Donald Tusk is leading the uh, civic uh, parties, the civic coalition, and he will be much more pro-Ukraine, but the Law and Justice Party is trying to hang on, and they're using a kind of an, an anti-Ukrainian annoyance over the grain deals uh, as, as a sort of political weapon. Yeah, cracks in, in NATO unity then, uh, potentially. Yeah, no, I mean, none of it makes world. that much practical difference, but it's not a good look for NATO, yeah. and it's, it's pleasing the Kremlin, that's for sure. Yeah, um, talk to me about the States as well. That government um, shutdown was narrowly avoided. Yeah. Um, how could that affect the situation in Ukraine? Again, the practicality of it isn't so important. It's the appearances of it. So the, the, the spending bill has gone back to the uh, 17th of November. Uh, so that delays it. They've got to you know, take it all up again then on the 17th of November. Meanwhile, the six billions worth of extra aid to Ukraine, which is now going to be put into a separate piece of legislation. And um, Kevin McCarthy, he's the House leader, he's the Republican House leader, he has said, OK, if you put the six billion into a separate bill and link it to more money for border support, for, you know, the border issues which bother the Ukrainians in the, on the Mexican border, then we'll push it through. Now, in saying that, people in his own party, this, this um, Freedom Caucus of 20-odd right-wing Republicans, all pro-Trump, all of them very pro-Trump, they've said, we're going to remove you for that because that's a, that's a betrayal of republicanism and, and the American people. It's unconstitutional. So they're locked in, in a, an enormous constitutional spat at the moment. The reality is the six billion, for extra, six billion extra for Ukraine will almost certainly go through, but it's not a good look. I mean, this is what happens in democracies. These things are package deals. They're very uh, vigorous when they're being talked about. But again, it gives the impression that the consensus is breaking up on being strong to support Ukraine. Yeah, all about the optics in, in the States and in Europe as well. Uh, Michael, uh, thank you as always.